The Sony Walkman, a case study by Sapna Darianani. In 1979, Masaru Ibuka, the co-founder of Sony, posed the question, don't you think a stereo cassette player that you can listen to while walking around is a good idea? Think about it, was it a good idea? If you own just about any mobile phone, chances are your answer will be yes. Most mobile devices today have audio listening capabilities for private enjoyment of music, podcasts, and so forth. And chances are if you have been the owner of some sort of iPod or MP3 player as well. All these examples of personal listening devices ultimately stem from Sony's visionary idea of a much more portable device to bring music anywhere. Before the invention of the Sony Walkman in 1979, Sony was already one of the company's pioneering audio devices. Its Pressman device allowed a user to bring and record audio wherever they went, but it was bulkier and really only used by business people and hobbyists. This was not a widespread consumer good. More common for everyday consumers, instead, was the boombox. The first boomboxes hit the market in 1977 and provided a way for people to bring music anywhere, so long as they were okay with broadcasting their music to everyone in their proximity. And users generally were okay with how public the listening experience was, but any passerby would have no choice but to hear what the boombox owner was playing. And, of course, the original boomboxes were quite large and not too convenient to carry around. The Walkman, however, was much smaller, weighing under a pound and measuring about six inches across. It could be handheld or even worn around the user's neck with a strap. This type of portability was extremely foreign to consumers, so Sony initially was not too optimistic about sales of the Walkman when it was introduced in Japan. But when the Walkman entered foreign markets, such as the US, sales exploded. Consumers started to realize the sheer convenience of being able to carry their favorite music wherever they wanted. Downtime while commuting, for example, could now be an enjoyable experience for Walkman listeners. All that was needed was a cassette and headphones. So, what changed after the Walkman grew in popularity? In many countries all over the world, the Walkman was the driver behind many cultural shifts. Going out for a jog, for example, was a much more popular leisure activity because it was more fun to exercise while listening to one's own music. One concern that came with the Walkman was that people would become more isolated while listening to music. In particular, the wife of one of the Sony executives was annoyed by the product's individualistic nature. To combat this, the Sony team built two headphone ports into the Walkman so two people could share the listening experience together. All the same, it can be said that the use of a personal listening device is often a solo activity. So these types of devices have become widespread for people to use in their daily lives when not interacting with others. Another concern that came about with the rise of the Walkman was the dangers of listening to personal devices. In the town of Woodbridge, New Jersey, for example, the Walkman was banned among drivers, pedestrians, and cyclists in 1982 because listening to music using headphones was considered a possible distraction. The popularity of listening to headphones also led to concern about hearing damage associated with personal listening devices. As a result, doctors began conducting research to study the effects of headphones, and a correlation was found between hearing loss and listening to loud music for long periods of time. The fact remains that, despite criticisms, the Sony Walkman was a hit among consumers. By 1986, the Walkman was so popular that the term Walkman was added to the Oxford English Dictionary. The original Walkman continued to evolve over the years. It eventually accommodated CDs and even television. In 1988, Sony released a Walkman model with wireless headphones, a precursor to Bluetooth technology that was still 12 years away. But as the technology was changing, so was the industry. Cassette and CD players were once novelties, but with time became obsolete. By the early 2000s, MP3 technology was just being introduced. Few companies found huge success with MP3 players until Apple developed the iPod in 2001. What made the iPod so popular? It was designed to be much more sleek and user-friendly than other MP3 players, but more importantly, the iPod was designed to integrate seamlessly with Apple's music library, iTunes. Apple understood the need for cohesion in portable devices, 
and no other devices innovated their software quite like Apple. That being said, the popularity of the Sony Walkman dwindled throughout the 2000s. The Walkman cassette player was discontinued in 2010. In 2015, Sony changed the name of its Android smartphone music app from Walkman to simply Music. Sony continues to sell high-resolution Walkman devices to this day, but they are rather expensive and not very popular among most consumers, especially when music listening capabilities are built into their smartphones. So, while Sony's reign in the portable music device industry may be over, the Walkman's influence is immeasurable. It transformed the way we listen to the music we love, establishing a lifestyle that was always plugged in, no matter where or when. With more foresight into the prevalence of digital music in the 21st century, Sony might have been a worthy competitor for Apple, but instead the Walkman lives on as a piece of nostalgia and inspiration for modern technologies.